In his works he told of himself in so kind, sincere, and natural manner that everyone who reads his poems feels as his interlocutor. Quintus Horatius Flaccus was a creator of the classical Roman lyrics. A representative of the ancient Golden Age literature, he was born on December 8, 65 BC, in the Roman colony at Venosa, or Vunesia, into the family of an emancipated slave. After the family moved to Rome, his father gave Horatio to school, where children of nobility studied. Imitating noble Roman youths, Horatio finished his education in Athens, where he studied Greek literature and philosophy. There in autumn of 44 BC, Marcus Brutus, the notorious murderer of Julius Caesar, were recruiting the Republicans to fight against military leaders, Antonio and Octavian, the emperor's supporters. Impetuous and romantic, Horace became Brutus's comrade, though he was against wars and political quarrels. The son of the former slave was pleased in getting the title of a military tribune. Horace headed the legion. The young man became sober only two years after, when they were defeated near Philippi. In the year 40 BC, an amnesty was declared for the supporters of Brutus, and Horace returned to Rome. His father had died, and his belongings were confiscated long ago. To earn some money, Horace entered collegium of the legal scribes. At the same time, he became friend with poets Virgil and Lucius Varius Rufus. They introduced 27-year-old Horace to the noble patrician named Gaius Clinius Maecenas. Maecenas was not only a patron of the best poets of those times, but also a promoter of new talents. It was he whom Horace, at his 30, dedicated his first poetry, the book Satires. Before Horace, Greek and Roman satirists were used to disclose human vices and imperfections with righteous anger. Unlike his predecessors, when speaking on morals, Horace used delicate mockery and benevolent jokes. Soon Horace published a collection of 17 poems. He didn't follow the standards of the Alexandrian's poetry as literature fashion of that time demanded. He wrote after the patterns of ancient Greek classics. In 33 BC, the poet got a small manor in Sabine Mountains as a present from Maecenas. That had maintained him for all his life. It was significant that being proud to be a patrician's friend, Horace never abused his confidence. The poet who glorified the golden mean in his poems was far from demanding more generosity. Nevertheless, Horace always addressed Maecenas as equal that was evidently pleasant for the patrician. The second book of satires was written by Horace eight years later. Then, from his own experience, Horace was interested not in certain incarnations of vice, but in generalized characters. Self-perfection became almost the main theme of his poetry. At the same time, Maecenas introduced Horace into the circle of Octavian August's friends. Although he was close to the emperor, the poet kept his circumspection and held his concept of the golden mean. When Octavian proposed Horace the position of a personal clerk, the poet tactfully declined tempting proposal. He was afraid to lose his dear independence. August was not offended by his denial. After he read some of odes and conversations by Horace, he complained, I am angry that you never talk to me in so many poems. Maybe you're afraid that the descendants would find disgraceful the fact you were close to me. Then Horace addressed the letter to the emperor, beginning with, O oh Caesar, you have so many hard obligations, keeping the morals of Roman state and giving protection. Judging the best, I would harm prosperity of nation by taking your precious time with my long conversation. In 17 BC, there were so-called centuries games, the holiday Romans celebrated once 110 years. 
On a commission from August, Horace wrote the ceremonial Jubilee Hymn. It was performed at the Apollo of Palatine's Temple, so Horace's poetical merits were evidently confessed by the government. Horace and Maecenas were still being friends until the death of the patrician. The poet only two months outlived his patron. Horace died on November 27, 8 BC. However, his poetry is immortal. The satirists Perseus and Juvenal imitated Horace. In the age of Renaissance, people were fond mostly of his lyrics. Horace's poetry was studied, commented, and translated into different languages. His undying poem, The Monument, produced innumerable imitations. That was how came true the poet's prophecy about his literary immortality. Ex sigi monumentum aere perimus. When I have seen by times, fell hand defected. 